Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're looking at Sierra Chart and we're gonna talk about some more advanced settings of the charting uh, and scaling options within Sierra Chart. So this is actually the second part of a two-part series here on the scaling options here within Sierra Chart. So let's kind of take a look here. We've previously looked on how to compress and decompress both the X and the Y axis and some of the options there for resetting uh, the uh, scaling and things like that. But let's take a look at some options here. They're a little bit more advanced and that you can kind of tweak to uh, make Sierra Chart your own and kind of get it to your preferences. So by default, we noticed last time in the video that uh, when you kind of uh, drag up or down here on the Y axis, what it does is it doesn't actually compress or decompress the chart, it just scrolls it up or down so you can kind of reposition it. And a double click, of course, to reset. Um, now what we noticed last time is when you control click, you can compress or decompress. I know some people like uh, to actually use the drag up or down as the compress and decompress and then control click to actually uh, move up and down here and scroll. So you can actually set that up. So if we right mouse click within our chart here, uh, the first three options here are interactive scale range, interactive scale move and interactive scale locked. So by default, it will be interactive scale move. So that just means that when we uh, right mouse click, regular mouse click within the Y axis here and then scroll up or down, that means of course we move our chart up or down. Um, so if we were to choose the interactive scale range, what that means is that when we uh, mouse click within our Y axis here and move up or down, it's actually gonna default to the compress or decompress instead of kind of the scrolling option. Now you can still scroll up or down uh, and just move the actual candlesticks by control click. So it kind of reverses the options there. So depending on what your preferences are, you can either use the interactive scale range or the interactive scale move options for your chart. Uh, if you happen to be compressing or decompressing a little more than you scrolled or vice versa. Now the other option uh, we kind of took a look at was the interactive scale locked. We did use that a little bit in the last video, but let's kind of uh, explain that in a little bit more depth. So if I were to kind of mess around with my chart here, maybe I wanted to kind of have it uh, uh, a little bit down, maybe I'll, I'll expand it a little bit here, and I wanted to leave it just how it is. I didn't want to um, you know, compress or decompress or scroll up. Uh, what I can do is I can actually set it to interactive scale lock. So now that I have it set up, now when I try to click here and scroll up or down or compress or decompress, nothing happens because we actually locked our Y axis. So that's just in case you don't wanna accidentally compress or decompress or uh, scroll throughout your chart um, you know, just by accident. So that's uh, just another option there for you. So I'm gonna switch this back to move here and I'll uh, reset just by double clicking again, just kind of a handy feature there. Now let's take a look at some other options. When we right mouse click again, we see here some other options for scale range. So we have automatic, which it is set to by default. And that just means that it's gonna automatically fit everything in, inside our chart here uh, when we click that reset button, of course, and it kind of fits everything and makes it look nice. Now the second option is the scale range independent. This actually works almost the same way, but when you would wanna use that is when you actually have the same things uh, or multiple things in the same panel. So if I had a study, for example, maybe I had a moving average or something on my chart and I had that both in the same panel kind of overlaid, that's kind of where you would wanna use the scale range independent. That means it's gonna use uh, an independent scale range for uh, your chart and then whatever study or um, uh, you know other things that you may have on top of that. So if you're using multiple things in the same panel, uh, it may be beneficial to use this scale range independent option. Now the next option here, uh, these two are actually uh, mostly the same. These are scale range, constant range. So what that does is uh, it doesn't look a whole lot different, um, but what it does in this case is it takes the last bar here and it will um, have a constant range around the average price of this last bar. So it's gonna calculate what the average price of the last bar is, and it's gonna kind of have a constant range around that. So if we kind of scroll through our chart, you can see uh, it's using the uh, constant, or it's using the average price of the last bar here as a kind of a constant range. And the uh, second option here uh, for that, if we go back into our uh, right mouse click menu is the auto center. So it's just essentially the same thing with the addition of the auto center option. 
So I'm gonna switch that back here to scale range automatic, but let's go a little bit further here. You'll notice we have one option that we haven't talked about yet on the right mouse click menu. Uh, in the first video or the second video. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm gonna click on that and that'll bring up a separate window, the scale window. So from here, we have even more options. So if there's uh, some other things that you haven't seen yet that you're kind of wondering about here as far as the scaling options, uh, we have a few more. So uh, in addition to the automatic and independent here, and as well as the constant range options for the scale range, we have uh, some other options. So uh, notably here, we have the user defined options. So instead of having kind of a range uh, based off of the average price of the last bar, you can actually set the top of the range. So if I wanted to uh, set it to a specific price level. For example, I could set up uh, 1550 for the top of the range and maybe 1535 for the bottom of the range. I could do that just using this user defined option. So there's uh, just a few more options within here. Another option we have is the scale type. So by default, it's set to linear, but if you do prefer logarithmic charts, uh, you can use that as well. That's an option uh, that's within this scale menu. Now here's one more thing that I want to mention within the scaling uh, window here, and that's the scale increment. This refers to the actual uh, increment for the Y axis. So you can see right now um, it's set to automatic. So zero uh, will set it up to automatic, so it will automatically adjust the scaling increment, whether you compress or decompress or uh, scroll around your charts or kind of uh, fiddle with them to make it uh, how you like it. It will automatically adjust. But if you want it, it say set to a fixed increment, you can do that as well. So for example, if I type in a one here, it will uh, set it up to a one point increment. So you can adjust that uh, how you wish just by using that right mouse click and scale menu here to go ahead and use that. For example, if I wanted to switch that to two points, I'll just go ahead and select okay. And that will adjust that there in case you liked a fixed uh, scale range. Well, thank you for viewing this second video here in the chart scaling uh, range. Stay tuned to our channel for more videos on Sierra Chart.